Hello guys, I'm Rebel and welcome back to Anybody Can Code Python series. In the previous tutorial, we've learned some of the basic concepts like statements, indentation and comments. In case you missed to watch the tutorial, I've shared the link in the description box. Check it out using the link. In this tutorial, we'll be learning about how to take input from the user and print output using Python 3. Python 3 has an inbuilt function to take inputs from the user called as the input function. For example, let's say I give a is equal to input of. So here I'm expecting an input from the user and that input will be stored in a. Let me give enter. So guys, as you can see, the compiler does not return or show anything regarding the input in the console screen. In such cases, you have to prompt the user on what to enter. So prompting can be done this way. a is equal to input of enter your name. So here I've written the prompt message as enter your name. Let me run and check. Like you just saw, our message got prompted. But remember, whenever you prompt a message, it should be enclosed within single or double quotes. Now I'll enter a name. Now to check whether the name that I've entered is stored in A or not, let me use a simple print statement. Print of A. So yeah, it got stored. The name that I've entered is a string. Obviously, the type of data that is stored in A must also be a string. Let's verify it by using a type statement. Type of A. So yeah, it is considered as a string. Now, let me do a slight modification in the input statement. Asking the user to enter is age. Click on enter. Let me give an integer input 23. Again, I will check its type. Type of VA. So as you just saw, it has considered my integer input as a string. So the point is input function always considers uh, any input given to it as a string only. This might kind of be problematic in certain cases. However, this can be solved by using type conversion. We'll be learning about type conversion in the later tutorial. Now, getting back to the topic of discussion, let's say you want to take two or more inputs from the user. So what would you do? Obviously, the easiest way is to use the input statement two or more times. For example, x is equal to input of enter first name y is equal to input of enter last name so here i've used two input statements one by one now we can also combine these two input statement in single line itself x comma y is equal to input of enter first name comma input of enter last name now to check whether it got stored in x and y print x print y so yeah it got stored in x and y respectively so the next way to take multiple inputs from the user is by using the split function so let's try it out this is this this is the syntax of split function
and here I will ask the user to enter two of his hobbies. Dot split. I will simply give singing space reading. Let us print and check. Print of x. As you just saw, one hobby is stored in x, another hobby is stored in y. Since the split function considers space as the default delimiter, it is able to store both of these hobbies in x and y respectively. Now suppose if the user enters like this, singing, comma, reading. So we are getting an error here, not enough values to unpack. So this means it has considered both the hobbies as a single string. So to fix this, we can specify comma as the delimiter. Comma 2. So this number 2 specifies the maximum number of inputs into which the given input must be split according to the delimiter. Here I have given 2 because we are expecting 2 inputs. Let me click on enter. Now let us try using another delimiter x comma y singing and reading let us print and check. So that's how split function works. Another way to take multiple inputs from the user is by using map function. So this is the syntax of map. So these two parameters are mandatory. This function refers to any user defined function or any built in function. Iterables refers to list of values. Basically this map function passes each item of the iterables to the function. So let us try it out. x comma y is equal to map of int comma input of enter two numbers. dot split so here int is the function and this is where you will pass the iterables click on enter one space two let's try printing it print of x print of y in this way we can only give multiple integer inputs as i have specified int as the function similarly we can specify any data type or function so here i'll specify string as the function here let's change it to enter two strings str click on enter face prep let's try printing it so that's how map function works there's also another way to take multiple inputs from the user called as the list comprehension since we have not got into the topic of lists we'll see it in the later tutorials getting back to the print function like i said before the print function is used to print things on the output screen firstly the syntax of print function print values comma and
So this is the syntax of print function. None of these parameters are compulsory. We can even write an empty print function. Print of. So this gave a new line. Let's try printing a character. Sorry. Print of a. So in this way we can print a single character. Let's try printing a string. Paste prep. As you just saw, it is mandatory to enclose a character or a string within double quotes or single quotes. Let's try printing numbers. 1, 2, 3. So for numbers, it is not mandatory to enclose it within double quotes or single quotes. Now let me try printing an expression. Print 2 into 3. So yeah, it got evaluated and uh, gave us the result as 6. Print 2 into 3 is equal to So in this way, we can combine a statement as well as an expression. Now let's move to the next parameter called as separators. This is used to add separators like comma, hyphen, quotes in between the values. For example, print 21, comma, 10. As you just saw, the separator has added hyphens in between all the three values resulting in a date format. The next parameter is the end parameter. Let me show you through an example. Print. This is a statement. Comma. In this equal to. Full stop. Like you just saw, it has ended the statement with a full stop. By this way, we can use this parameter to append anything at the end of the statement. So the next parameter is the file parameter. This is used to specify the place where the print statement must be printed. By default, it is the stdout. stdout is nothing but the file where the output is printed. You can even specify any files as you want. We will be learning about file handling in the later tutorials. The last and final parameter flush denotes a boolean value. It is set to true if the output is flushed, else it is set to false if the output is buffered. The default value is false. And that's all for today. You can try experimenting input and output functions. And in case if you have any doubts, post it in the comment section below. See you all in the next tutorial. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.